Round two. Let's see if something else is gonna happen. Has to cancel it. You see the damage output? Ooh, huge! What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks. In today, we're gonna cast yet another replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. This time, once again, on the classical and most famous map, the Fort of Aizen. We have the yellow Gondor player Oats versus the orange Rohan player Dunedain. So basically, it's a good against good matchup, a matchup I usually don't like to play and also not to watch because it's like pretty much straightforward matchup, you know what I'm saying? So Rohan will eventually end rush, Gondor will try to defend. If you can't defend, you will be defeated. If you can defend, you will, you know, try to fight for the map control. So basically a matchup uh, fighting around the settlements, pretty much non-stop. 24-7 map control is already very important in this game, but even more important in this matchup. Okay, we have peasants moving on. You need to kind of play aggressively with the Rohan faction against any faction at the beginning of the game because you have the best early game hands down. Like, you have the chance to recruit so many additional peasants, like he does for example, right? He went for two more right off the bat and he will recruit yet another two. So he will have in total, with the starting two peasants, six peasants. And they cost only 100 each in the patch 1.06, which is very cost efficient. They are not very strong, not as strong as soldiers, but two of them can still beat one soldier. And remember, the Gondor faction doesn't have um, the option to recruit any units from the farms, unlike the Rohan faction. And for that reason, you will have to play defensively if you don't want to lose your settlements early on. I mean, very smart micro from Dunedain, by the way. He's trying to buy time with the Hobbit and commit in the meantime on the farm. If he can surround the farm and make sure that every single peasant is able to attack, he might be able to take it down. I think that's the goal here. Uh, not fight against soldiers, that's kind of pointless because they will win against you. Um, but if you focus down the structure exclusively, you might be able to take it down and, you know, it's like a bingo. When you can take it down and cloak your hobbit Mary around the settlement, so making sure that the Gondor opponent cannot recapture that. It's like a dream situation. I mean, here's one more. And that's the problem. You see the two soldiers and the hobbit Pippin is around this area. And we will have two more peasants coming from the middle and even one more from the bottom side. So, at bare minimum, he will at least lose one farm. And if the Rohan player knows what he's doing, it will always be the case. With enough peasant spam, you can guarantee that you can at least destroy one farm. And now you might say, but Shanks, going for the peasants early game will delay your stable. But it's, it's okay, because your stable is already cheaper than the from Gondor. Remember, you have no secondary resource building, so basically you go for farms which are cheaper than the blacksmiths, your stable being cheaper, and also your Rohirrim are cheaper. So the early game, like you can see, is definitely in the favor of the Riddermark faction Rohan. Oh, but he killed Meriadoc Brandybuck, the real hobbit from the Shire. I think this farm is going to be protected too, because as you can see, the builder is working hard, you know, he's sweating. <laughs> he's trying his best to defend this, repair this. And nice micro with the Hobbit, you know, making sure to cancel the auto attack animation. This way you can attack more frequently and make sure to defend this. But of course, he lost this farm. It's kind of expected because he doesn't have too many units. He cannot split the two soldiers. He will get outnumbered and get crushed. Rohan was able um, to get one more peasant around this location. He will get yet another one. And with them, he might be eventually able to destroy it, but the Hobbit is highly leveled now. Level 3 Hobbit is going to hit like a truck. But now that's where the fun begins. Because the early game uh, is kind of rough for the Gondor faction. Now that's the important part for the Gondor. He needs to try to creep as many war players as he potentially can. Why is this important? Map control is the key to victory, and the Gondor power spike is going to be when Gandalf is being recruited. And for that reason, you need power points. You need to get two power points at bare minimum after the heal to get Gandalf the white power point unlocked from your spellbook. Remember, we are on the patch 1.06, in which Gandalf cannot even be mounted on the Shadow Fags if he doesn't have the power point from the spellbook. You know? So, Gandalf without Shadow Fags is actually definitely not worth 6000. Okay, Gondor player was able to destroy this, uh, but he needs to creep. Needs to creep, 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 creep. We have the first Rohirrim being sent forward. It's gonna be a 1v1 situation. In a 1v1 situation, it's important to not use the wedge formation. The armor is so much more important than the damage you get. So basically, if you have to make a choice between armor and damage, you need to choose armor. 
armor is better uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So soldier with 50% with armor leadership, again soldier with 50% damage leadership, soldier with 50% armor leadership is going to smash. I mean, it's not going to be even close. Like, the calculation is a bit different, you know what I'm saying? So basically, you have 50% damage reduction. So, the opponent unit has 50% more damage, but your armor is going to make it like he has 25% more damage. But you still have 50% more armor. I don't know if, it, if it's kind of clear, but, you know, long story short, armor is better <laughs> than damage leadership, in a one-on-one -on -one situation at least. I mean, of course, there are some circumstances in which you want to have more damage leadership, for example, against trolls, you want to burst them down fast enough, but, you know, one-on-one -on -one between Gondonites and Rohirrim, they are equally strong, um, so they can, it's kind of, it, it depends who's going to get the first attack off, who's going to win the fight, but if you choose the wedge formation and the other unit doesn't, the one without the wedge formation, that was really close. Oh, <laughs> imagine losing the, <laughs> imagine losing the Gondonite to the work uh, right after you, pur you purchased the, um, Forge bleeds. That would be kind of a shame. Okay. Almost two power points in the bank for the Gondor. And Rohan went for a heal after the draft, obviously. He's creeping also this work layer. And we have not many work layers left on the field anymore. So what is the plan? Will Rohan rush and moot? That is going to be the question. I mean, Dunodan is a player who doesn't like to go for the end mood. He likes to play like a long game. You know, he want to have like a game with upgrades, with, you know, all that crazy stuff. So you might see a lead game potential, but I believe a lead game is going to be harder and harder for the Rohan faction against Gondor. If Gondor gets Gandalf on the field, if you have no Elma leadership, you will have a hard time dealing with the White Wizard. And later on with the Trevishy, who are going to defend the castle of the White City quite nicely. Remember, the ends are very vulnerable against fire damage, so Trebuchet are hard countering the ends. And he went for Elma. Okay, that already is a signal that he want to play for the lead game. <laughs> you full of a took. Taste my spear on your face, son. Level 2, that's good. Uh, level 4 is required for the Horse Lord. It's a massively important leadership for the nearby Rohirrim and Rohirrim archers. Rohirrim archers later on are going to be definitely needed because in order to kill the uh, to kill the Gandalf, you need firepower. Rohirrim cannot catch to him. Remember, there are two... like. Basically, in this game, there is a movement speed for the cavalry units and heroes. So every cavalry unit, Vork, Rider, Gondonite, Rohirrim, Eoma, Theorin, Farami Mounted, you know, uh, even Elvin, or basically, uh, yeah, basically everyone who's, who can ride has the same movement speed, but there are two exceptions to the rule. Eoma and also Gandalf. They are a bit faster, a little bit faster than the Gondonites, Rohirrim, Eowyn, Theorin, Farami Mounted, and so on. So I'm saying that because Rohirrim with melee swords, they can never catch Gandalf, that's not possible. But Rohirrim archers can deal bonus damage to heroes, that's their specialty, and they also counter the Gondonites. So Elma is trying to get level 4. In the patch 1.06, the spear throw was very weak. Against upgraded units, it wouldn't even one-shot a single Gondonite. We boost, we made this a bit strong in the patch 2.22. And the only thing you could do back in the day was to over and over throw spear on the banner carrier. That's the only legit thing, you know? Almost 3 power points for Gondor. Here's the power points for Gandalf, definitely. Map control is looking like a 50-50 situation. Rohan cannot fight this at this point, because he has no upgrades yet. But he's going for the armory, and very soon he will be able to fight the Gondor Knights on a 1-on-1. He went for Elma and Theorin. And spear throw. I mean, the good thing about spear throw is it is really like a low cooldown, so you can spam that, you know? Spam that like crazy. Every 20 seconds or so, you can use it over and over again. And that's the plan, right? So he needs to kill around about 8 more Gondonites. <laughs> like, you know, that's the plan to get him to level 4. He's going for the night shields too. Look, you see? He doesn't one shot. Okay, Rohan has to reclaim a bit map control, he needs to go for heavy armor first. The same scenario here, in early game, you need to go for uh, heavy armor instead of the forge blades, and especially for the Rohan faction, it's very important. Of course, the heavy armor is more expensive in compared to the forge blades, but upgrading the Rohirrim with the forge blades costs you 100 more in compared to the heavy armor. Heavy armor costs you only 250, but forge blades cost you 350. So, 
Yes, yeah, so you need to upgrade multiple Rohirrim with that. The 200 differential in terms of purchasing the upgrade in the first place is definitely not nearly as much of a deal, as big of a deal as the you know upgrades you need to buy on your Rohirrim later on. Okay. Yoma. Level 3, that's good. That's very good, actually. Does he have Gandalf anytime soon? Um, no, actually not. Like, he's going for upgrades. He went for the shields to get a bit more tanky against Rohirrim archers. He went for the forge blades, heavy armor to be able to contest the map control. And I think that's the time when he will start um, act actively saving up for Gandalf. You need 6,000 for Gandalf if you have no statues around for the discount. We have the new farm. <laughs> Okay, Eoma is getting closer and closer to level 4. Once again, a huge power spike. There comes the Elven Wood from the Gunner player to nullify the leadership bonuses from the Rohan faction. But Rohan will be able to cover this Elven Wood with his own Elven Wood. That means Rohan has now even more leadership on the, on the land. You get additionally 40% armor. And again, every single leadership in this game is able to stack with each other. So Theodian gives you 50-50 damage armor. This dude gives you 60 when he's level 4. And he will be level 4 very soon. And also 50% combat experience. Each level gives you additional boost of damage and armor leadership, armor bonus. And land gives you also 40%. So Rohan going for the land is actually a huge thing. Because whenever Gondor is going to try to use it, Rohan will be ready to cover it. So he will have always an advantage. And remember, the pressure is on Gondor. He, he, he is the one who needs to use it. Because if you, if you want to fight the Rohirrim, or if you want to blast them with your Gandalf, you have to use it first. So Rohan can always be patient, wait for the Gondor player to use it, and then be ready himself to cover it the second it's being used. You see they are starting to deal a bit more damage now. I mean Rohan needs a bit more time, because after this one he needs to also build the archer range, recruit 3 Yomon archers, get it to level 2, to buy fire arrow upgrade, then purchase fire arrow on the Rohirrim archers, they cost 500 each. Um, so Rohan needs a bit more time. But Gondor doesn't need that much time because he has now 6,000 in the bank and Gandalf will be recruited right off the bat. Remember, a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Boom, level 4, boys. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. Okay, that's gonna be kind of fun. To see 110% damage leadership against Gondor Knights and against Gandalf. Because if you don't know, the Rohirrim archers, they are countering both heroes and cavalry. But they are like glass cannon. So they cannot take any damage. They have to be in a safe spot. And whenever you are getting engaged on, you need to peel back. You don't want to sit there and tank damage for no reason. But it's going to be harder and harder in the later stages of the game for Gandalf to approach this Rohirrim archer army. And the game-breaking point will be when this Theodin somehow manages to get to level 4. The Glorious Charge, massive power spike, makes those Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches nearly unkillable. Immortals, pretty much. And Gandalf cannot even kill them anymore, you know, with the Wizard Blast. Okay, but he's gonna be able to force them to retreat. Armory demolished. Armor purchase on this Rohirrim Arches, and he also buys Banner. Very important, once again, huge power spike between level 1 and level 2. There are miles in terms of power and damage output and tankiness. Strength overall, each level makes them literally 10 to 15 percent stronger. <laughs> he blasted Theodine in his face. Uh oh, oh, nice try. So basically, Theodine is so squishy that when you hit him one single time with an uh, auto attack or visa plus and you combine it with the easter light right after you can kill him in a second but very smart move from rohan the second he took the damage from the visa plus like a little bit tiny damage because visa plus is not very effective against heroes but he went immediately back to the well to regenerate his hp a tiny bit just to be each healthy enough to not get one shotted by the easter light very smart move i mean gondor is losing map control um, he needs to find a transi transition. And the transition would be definitely something like a marketplace, for example. Or you go for tower guards, you know. He gets chunked. Go for it. Be a man. You have Oh, you have no heal. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Don't go for it. You see he's getting bullied. Does Eomi have a spear? Almost. He's waiting for it. I don't think it will kill him, though. You will find out. Oh, oh. Close. 
but not close enough. You ain't getting me tonight, horse master. And you see, the, the, the later the game goes on, the harder it will be for the Gondor faction player to contest the map control. Because Rohirrim, when you go for a um, cavalry fight, Rohan is the best, right? Rohan is a Riddermark faction at the end of the day. So you are specialty. Your specialty lies in the stable. I mean, that's the reason why Rohan is such a <laughs> powerful faction, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't have any weak stitch. The only weakness, I mean, there are two weaknesses, but one of them can be avoided, kind of. Um, the only major weakness of the Rohan faction is the lack of siege damage. So when somebody is camping, it's hard for them to break through it. Right, when, for example, Gonda would camp with, like, a bunch of trebuchet around the base, inside the castle, and he's just camping it out, right? Oh, 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 okay, he's looking for opportunity, for a chance to show his quality. But you have the right rider, it has to be good for something. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, full of a dick. Okay? I mean, Gondor is kind of cash floating. I don't know what the plan is. Like, you gotta find something. You need to do something with your money, right? You don't wanna wait. I mean, he's microing Gandalf. Oh, he's gonna charge Lightning Sword, but he... Oh, yeah, he needs to cancel it. Because the second he's in charging, you see the micro is very important. Gandalf is looking for a chance to get in, in, into the range to blast them, but Rohan play is moving all the time, which makes it almost impossible for Gandalf to do that kind of stuff. And the second he stops to do Lightning Sword, Rohan can stop too and start attacking him. And this Rohirrim Archer with Fire Arrow and Double Leadership can definitely hurt you. Oh, oh, don't lose level 5. Don't. Look, 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 very smart. You see what he's doing? He's trying to catch him from this location. So he's going to split them in two pieces just to make sure that the Gondor player cannot dance around Rosie. And he's looking for it. But Gondor is coming with Gandalf to reinforce those Gondor Knights. So they can get see in safety uh, without getting okay i mean that's not the best with our plus in the world <laughs> but to be honest i cannot even flame or blame him because it's so hard rohan play is paying attention to every single rohirrim archer he has on the field he's making sure that gandalf is not gonna get a free with our plus he needs to do stuff for it which is easy said than done because you cannot stop them from moving they are incredibly mobile and by far the best unit in the game like rohirrim archer low-key the best unit in the game like, they, they are pretty much like rangers on horses, you know, they have like crazy DPS, they can counter pikemen, they can counter heroes, they can counter monsters, like trolls, mumakirs, and even felbies like Nazgûs and Witch King. I hear Trebuchet, but he needs more than one. Gandalf is chasing, but Rohan is disengaging. It's like, look, look, you see that, boys? He got zero experience. And this dude is already on the field in the past two minutes. He wasn't able to kill anything so far. Like, legit nothing. It's kind of crazy. I mean, he has fire arrows now. He has stable backup. He will have the money very soon also to recruit Aragorn for even more leadership. And he has the power points also to give him the Jedi Sword. The Anduri. The Flame of the West. Look, the damage. That's the thing, you know. Structural damage. Check. Damage against heroes, check. Countering cavalry, check. Attacking flying units, check. Like legit, the best unit in the game. Okay, Gandalf can... Oh, 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 he's going for it. He's going for it. What is he doing? Oh, he didn't go for it. I don't know what he's doing, really. He's gonna recommit now, but Rohan... That's a free... Okay, that's so good for Rohan, because he just beat it off the heel, and he didn't lose anything of that. Now he's gonna peel back, and he knows now that Gondor player doesn't have heal. And again, when you are like a very good player, you need to play around the cooldowns. You need to understand, okay, can he go for a play? Does he have heal? Like, you, maybe sometimes he wanna beat you. He wanna make you believe that you can kill the Gandalf, but in reality he has heal. But now he has like cooldowns, like 3 minutes cooldown, for example. And in this 3 minutes period, Gondor player has to be double careful. Because one single misstep by Gandalf the White, and he will be Gandalf the Dead. For Trebuchet, Firestone, Purchasing. Map is looking good for me. Rohan player is definitely ahead. Oh, oh, I mean, such a good micro, dude. Such a good micro. Like, incredible micro. It's really fun to watch. I, like, when I, I could never play with Rohan against Gondor like that. I'm losing my patience. I will just attack Gandalf and give him the chance to get Visa Plus over and over again. Like, for such a play, 
besides being a good player, you need to be also a patient person, you know? You need to love to play late game with horses to do that non-stop. Because one single mistake, one visa plus can kill those three Rohirrim arches and they are so expensive, boys. Like three of them with fire, arrow, banner and heavy armor, they cost 700 each. By the way, 700 each. So 2100 only for the recruitment and then you need to invest 1500 for the fire arrow on three of them. Then you need to invest 750 for the heavy armor, 900 for the banner. So lots of money, you know, lots of money. By the way, Tyrion got just level three. It's becoming scarier and scarier. It's like a very crane situation in which Gondor needs to kind of be careful because now he's moving off of the trebuchet, yes. But the trebuchet have little to zero defense. So I'm curious how you wanna get to the castle. I'm very curious. Like you need some normal Rohirrim. Is one of them the forge blades and even if you have to sacrifice it it's ox it's okay because what will happen is you kill four trebuchet they cost in total 900 each 300 for the firestone and 600 for them it means 900 1800 2700 3600 and you lose one row here it's okay okay he's trying to get into the middle range because if you don't know the catapults the trebuchet they have like a minimum range they cannot shoot you when you are right next to them so it's a very good... Oh! Okay, nice. He killed Tyrion, though. That's good. Faramir is also here to show his quality. But all the trebuchet are gone, besides one. That's the problem. And the one trebuchet will need Aegis to break the part of the wall. Okay, now he want to commit on the outpost. I don't know about that, because at the outpost, they have 100% damage leadership from the statue. Which is even more leadership than you would get from Tyrion. He's attacking the Geet. Um, <laughs> but again, you see the damage output... Is not very high so you need like 12 shots which you know will be even enough time for him to get his theory back on the field you need to reinforce those trebuchet he has two more in the base but in a, in a dream world uh oh look what are you doing man <laughs> but that's so tilting look he's gonna pay he's gonna lose the level eight don't tell me he has no shields oh bonding out of him he had the chance to do that gandalf in the meantime was trying to go for a blast but again he's getting bullied I mean, what I was trying to say, in a dream world, you want to empower your push with some tower guards. Like, it's like a, it's like a very... Faramir got killed in a second, by the way. Uh-oh. Ganoff, does he have heal? No, he doesn't have heal, but he should be fine. Ganoff is too fast. He cannot be caught by the Strohir matches. Okay. Like, without, without tower guards, it's very hard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I've been sent back until my task is done. Looks like Gandalf's task is not done yet because he doesn't want to go back to the graveyard. We have five, five more trebuchet and he's still refusing to build the barracks. Like, a, like yeah, like basically, re, uh, you know, Rohirrim matches are countering the tower guards too, but tower guards are very tanky against fire arrows too. So they can tank this damage for a long time and they can pre pre prevent the enemy Rohirrim to reach in the melee range to destroy your trebuchet like rohan will most likely not try to kill your trebuchet with, with uh, rohirrim arches because when it comes to shooting rohirrim arches they need to stop so they have to stop before they can shoot any arrow which will give you the chance to hit them back with your trebuchet the main weakness of the uh, rohirrim arches i mean they are first of all glass cannons and they are also very vulnerable against fire damage so if one trebuchet shots shot if Firestone lands on a full battalion, the full battalion is gonna get gonna get one shotted, unless you have glorious charge. Like regardless about Theodine leadership, Elma or Aragorn, that doesn't matter anything. You will lose him. Aragorn with Blade Master. Yeah, he's too tanky. <laughs> he's too tanky. Look, look this. Aragorn. I mean, Aragorn is too tanky, dude. That's that's unbelievable, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's full HP, man. He just tanked fully charged lightning sword on his face. Which is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful ability in the game. When it's fully charged and hitting one single target. It's so busted. Like, Aragorn, Blade Master. I mean, the, the, the damage is misleading. So, it tells you that he deals 72 damage. And Gandalf deals 160. That's not the truth. <laughs> that's not the truth. Trust me on that one. It's not true. Because first of all, it doesn't calculate the, the Anduril. You get 100% more damage from Anduril, which is like 150 around about. And you have also uh, your Bleedmaster. 
So 100, and on top of the 100, after the calculation, you get additional 50% from the Bleed Master. And on top of that, you also get insane amount of tankiness. And on top of that, you also attack way faster than Gandalf do. Yeah, he killed every single trebuchet. I think that's the moment when Ro when Gondor player should be realizing, okay, dude, I need to change my strategy. I have to do something else because the definition of insanity is if you try to do the same thing over and over again and you're always expecting a different result. That ain't gonna happen. Like once again, he's doing the same thing. <laughs> I would say never, never change a running system, but this system is definitely not running that's the problem we have the new farm i mean nobody ever captured this output outpost either i think because they know it's hard to be protected and now rohan is very strong like he's only missing out the glorious charge from theory and then he will be literally like power level over 9000 blast them protect it very important don't let the rohirrim come anywhere close Almost level 40 or in 2. Very, very close. Aragorn can be once again sent. It's deja vu. It's gonna happen once again. And you shouldn't even bother. Yeah, he's gonna do it again. Round 2. Let's see if something else is gonna happen. Oh, 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 oh. Aragorn, use one button. One button. Killed once again every single trebuchet. I mean, I believe that he lost trebuchet in Worf at bare minimum around 6 thousand resources until this very moment which is very bad because he could have used the money in a in a different way look for example what people don't never did in the past and they are actually doing it more often now in the patch 2.22 again these replays are old replays from i don't know what 2019 2018 2017 and back in the day it was not a common thing when gondor was never going for the infantry in any matchup but I think in the patch 2.2, it's definitely rewarding to go for the combos. Like, I'm telling you, combos would be very strong combination against those Rohirrim marches. Once again, their weakness is fire arrow, and you having combos with soldiers protecting them in the front or tower guards, and ranges behind, can actually wipe out them. And also, in addition to that, they can deal constant damage to Aragorn. So Aragorn cannot be the one-man one army he is now, and cannot mindlessly, you know, go in, and destroy everything while fully tanking your lightning sword. Oh, nice blast. Nice blast, though. Nice blast. Very good, very good. It's a level 8. Rohirrim, he just lost. But look at the minimap, boys. Rohan is swarming from the top side, from the bottom side. Getting full map control. Again, 4 trebuchet, 5 trebuchet. Like, even, like, legit, even Boromir could be a nice choice. Because Boromir cannot fight against Aragorn. You know? <laughs> I mean, nobody. Can fight against Aragorn in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Not even Gandalf can do that. But Boromir can eventually knock him down on the ground. Boromir in Beef Me 1 has like a knock back, knock down, passive. So every auto attack he has like a percentage, cha percentage, percentage chance to knock down the target on the ground. It also includes Aragorn. So if you're lucky, you might be knocking him down permanently. So he can never move. His strength and his damage output doesn't do anything, doesn't matter anything, if he can't move, right? The siege. Oh, he's gonna lightning sword this. Oh yeah, you need to cancel it. When you see this dude moving to you, you gotta cancel it. I mean, commit with the Gondor Knights. They are level seven. They might be able to do something. Look this damage, dude. I mean, one man army, man. What can you do? Okay, he killed everything. <laughs> and again, the gate is not even, not even broken. Now, you see, he's playing it so smart. He never gives him the chance to land any shots on the Rohirrim archers. He always keeps them in a safe distance. Sends in the Rohirrim first, the normal Rohirrim warriors, and also, uh, and also his Aragorn. And once the trebuchet are gone, he can commit with his full army and force the Gandalf and also the Gondor Knights to retreat. And that, that happens pretty much over and over again. But we have now the Eagles available for Oats, the Gondor player. Um, Eagles can definitely take care of Gan uh, Aragorn, but the problem is there are just too many Rohir marches and they can legit one shot your Eagles. Oh, oh he just got level 4 too. That was the la <laughs> What a traitor. The last Elven warrior from the Summon of the Elves, from the spellbook, give Theoden King level 4. Right now, right for ruin in the world's ending.
Dev. Such a goosebump moment. Whenever I watch it, it's like an evergreen film. You know what I'm saying? I think the film is never getting old, never getting boring. You can watch it, especially some certain scenes. Like, for example, the Black Gate scene with Aragorn speech and the Rohirrim scene with in Minas Tirith, for example. It's just crazy. Gandalf can't approach them. It's pointless to go for Ibiza Plus because they won't even die. So if you want to go for it, you need to wait for the Glorious Charge to be off. Gondor is trying to take out, take out the outpost at the bottom side. He should be able to. Like, I, I would say you need to kind of find this one moment in which you can make a good use of the Eagle Summon. And the one moment might be, for example, if the army of Rohan is split. But that doesn't seem to be the case, ever. So I don't know. Like, he's always keeping the majority of his army, which you want to kill together, in the second you summon eagles, before they can attack one single time, before they can go down to attack them, one single time they will get killed. And Rohan has also almost 6 power points in the mech. I believe the... Um, say it. I believe the only possible way to actually kill the army of Rohan is going to be the army of the dead. You know, I'm telling you. Map control wise, it's looking good for for Rohan, and Gondor never went for the marketplace. Like norm, like normally this again, it's a long matchup. So basically, if you play Gondor against Rohan and Rohan doesn't go for the end mood, it's going to be like like a really long matchup. You know what I'm saying? And with that, no, with knowing that fact, you should be trying to go for the marketplace early game, because the longer the game goes on, and again, it's gonna be a long game, the more beneficial and more rewarding the marketplace is gonna become. You will get so much additional resources, 40% from the farms, which is a lot. Like, uh, for example, you have like uh, four farms outside, they're gonna act like you have like seven farms, you know what I'm saying? Look again, trebuchet, not protected, beautiful Visa Plus, but there comes the Rohirrim Archer commitment. Gandalf legit has to cancel it, you see the damage output? You see the damage output? Say hello to my little friends. He even had to heal him because the Alvin Alliance was actually kind of trying to chase him. He's gonna draw the sword, which are gonna make them immune to be trampled. So they can even deal some revenge damage. Gandalf has to peel back. Like, he can get away. Of course, he can run away. But what's the point of that? He never got the chance to go inside the army and blast them. He was trying to at the beginning, early game. But now he can't even try because he will just die before he can do that. Especially when he is on cooldown. He never recruited Legolas Gimli also. Legolas could be a nice choice. Like, when you think about it, Rohan has so many heroes with throwing abilities, right? So basically, Eowyn can throw a spear. So like, so can Eoma. Then you have, for example, Gimli with the axe throw. Legolas with the hawk strike or arrow, arrow wind. So you have like four heroes and every single one of them has like a special ability which can chunk a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And if you can combine them all together. So imagine a situation in which you are playing Rohan, you have Eowyn, Eoma with the spear throws, you have Gimli X throw, and you have Legolas Hawk Strike. And the second you see enemy Gandalf coming, you pretty much right click on him with his abilities. So he will get chunked in, a, in the face. Like bam 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 bam. Like four abilities. Spear, spear, X, arrow, you know? <laughs> and he will have to heal instantly. Otherwise he will die. I mean, Glorious Charge is back up almost, I believe. Yeah, he has it available. Is he gonna use it? Now, why? That's kinda not needed, in my opinion. And he missed, like, half the army. <laughs> he missed, like, half the army of it, also. I think that's kinda wasted, if I'm, if I'm being honest with you. I think Gonna Play is trying to actively farm, farm power points. That's what he's trying to do. Uh oh, Ganoff, don't run into the Rohirrim Arches like that. Uh oh, and Summon, he wanna go for the Siege. Um, the, the problem is he just used the glorious charge. When you go for a siege like that with the ends, you wanna you wanna keep your glorious charge. You wanna you wanna you wanna use it when you wanna go in. You know what I'm saying? You wanna go ham. Okay. Trebuchet. Um, the the one thing about the ends though, I mean they are weaker than trebuchet of course. As you can see, they are taking heavy damage from it, and they will permanently burn until they die. They will also feed lots of power points. So let's take a look. Um, Gondor has around about 5 power points. Let's say a quarter before 5. Uh, oh, he's smart. He's gonna get on the water. And the water is gonna get right out of the fire. You know what I'm saying? Now he's not gonna take any more damage, which is pretty good. And the, the Rohan Valley is also... Oh, never mind. He died, actually. He died. How? Why? How? What? It's kinda buggy. <laughs> okay. 
I mean, the ants, they have more range, so you can kind of abuse that, you know? They have more range, they have, especially with Treebeard around them, they can outrange every single other unit, trebuchet, ballista, catapult, by quite a, quite a bit, you know? So in order to hit them, the... Oh, boom, 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 yeah, you see? Can't play the game. He chunked the walls a little bit, but now it comes to commitment. He blasts them, but he want to always keep the distance, so he want to play smart with Gandalf. It looks like he's a coward, but he actually is smart, you know? Like, again, you cannot imagine how quickly he will go down if he makes a risky move. And the ants now keeping the distance and killing this catapult trebuchet, but they are gone now, unfortunately. They couldn't break any part of the wall. However, repairing this is very expensive for the Gondor faction. He would have to invest 1500 for this, 1500 for this, you know? And that's not gonna happen anytime soon because he's below 500 as he has almost no map control. But he's actively trying to farm power points. Rohan is trying to demolish the buildings in time to deny that, but he was still able to get round about 7 power points, which is pretty lit. Okay, beautiful shot. And the reason why Gondor is winning the power point battle is simple, because he doesn't have much to lose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So killing, that's the reason why we nerf trebuchet and catapults in this kind of aspect of oh, the eagles. Yeah. Oh, son, beautiful dude. There was a perfect visa plus if I've ever seen one. You see the eagle getting blown up, but Gandalf, 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 Gandalf. he's gonna hit him. He's gonna get in safety barely. It was a juicy, like very smart move from the Gondor player. Oats, by the way, executed like a professional player. Very, very smart. What is he doing? Oh, oh, he's trying to catch him with the Alvin Orions. Can he get away? If he can get away, he's a Houdini. It's like he's not a Houdini, but uh, still, it was a really great attempt. He summoned the Eagles, was kind of forcing the Rohan player to retreat. So Rohan player was in a very tricky situation in which he had to make a call. He had to make a choice: Do I kill the Eagles before they can? wipe out my heroes in my units, or do I turn and kill Gandalf? And he was trying to disengage, and he was running right into the Gandalf with a plus. I mean, he lost the Eagles, he lost Gandalf, but I think the attempt was still worth it, finally, and he got a bunch of power points from it. So he's up to 9.5 power point, he needs only half a power point for the EOD, once again a game-winning ability that can kill you even with Glorious Charge, all the leadership doesn't matter, EOD crushes everything, and all. In the meantime, Gondor was also able to capture this, the problem for the Gondor player, though, is that he's out of money, so he had, he doesn't even have money to revive his own Gandalf, which will cost him 2,340 resources, which he can't afford. He needs more than a thousand for that. And again, revive time for the Gandalf is extremely long, so you need to invest multiple minutes to get him back in the in the business, even when you have the money to revive him. But he's getting close there. I mean, Rohan is also pretty close actually, so I think that's gonna be a game in which we eventually gonna be able to see two EODs but the EOD from Gondor is gonna be more impactful because they have EOD has more stuff to kill I mean if Rohan is smart he might be able to get away because Rohir matches are faster than EOD we will see though we will see okay now he has money for the Gandalf I believe no he doesn't awkward situation <laughs> what can I say how, le how much level is Aragon? Okay, he's almost level 7. And uh, Eoma level 7 too. And yeah, that's enough, you know. That's a huge army of Rohirrim, man. But what I wanted to see is the reason, the obvious reason why Gondor is always able to win the power point battle against almost every single faction is because Gondor doesn't have too much stuff to kill. And in the patch 1.0, he went. He has AOD now. Oh, 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 oh. Do it, do it, do it, do it. He's trying to beat them. Nah. Huge, beautiful, nice, dude. He just lost the army worthy of M Rohan. Pretty much like ten thousand resources, and you can't even revive them. All of them are high level too. That's kind of busted. He's going for the gate rush now too. By the way, he doesn't give it. He, he doesn't care. Rohan is investing legit every single resource he has into the battle towers. He has a full full castle with a bunch of battle towers as you can see but Gondor is inside the jeans that has to be one of the best turnarounds if I've ever seen one the outpost still remaining on, under his control it's him uh, to this outpost but the towers they don't hurt those Gondor knights that much they have the shields they have high levels with heavy armor they are quite tanky does he have heal yeah he will heal them 
I mean, there are just too many towers. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Also, the stable is able to shoot. But, uh, I don't know. Like, look at the minimap, though. I mean, Rohan has so much ma more sustain in the eco than Gondor has. So, losing this high level and uh, level 9 Gondorite, for example. Yeah, he's gonna lose them eventually. The gate is closed. We have a way inside, but not a way outside. The castle will be saved. And Rohan, with that much money, will be able to, re you know, rebuild it quite fast. And Oats... Okay, never mind. He's not gonna wait for the end. He's gonna just leave the game, and that's it. GG well played, guys. Rohan is victorious. Theodin got his revenge from what happened in the Westworld. Because, as you guys know, he's saying that was Gondor when Westworld fell, and now he crashed Gondor. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.